Hello, everybody. It's Tuesday, November 17th, looking again at Matthew chapter 5, the Sermon on the Mount. Today, we're going to look at a larger passage of Scripture from verse 21 of chapter 5 all the way up to verse 26. Jesus speaking. You have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way, or he may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until you've paid the last penny. Do you notice how Jesus begins something that he's going to continue? He started it at the end of the last passage that we read yesterday when he said, listen, I have not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And now he's taking some things that are found in the law. First of all, murder. And not only is he saying that it still applies, he's taking it a step further and saying that if you're angry at your brother, the, the Greek word is adelphos, uh, which means uh, someone of common, uh, common denominator, I guess we could say, uh, we would look at that today as Christians and say a fellow Christian, right, brother or sister. And this day, I'm sure his hearers were, were looking at that as a fellow Jew, Right? So he's saying if you're angry for no reason with your fellow Jew, you'll be subject to judgment. So from this we say, well, gee whiz, we don't actually have to murder someone to be guilty. If we have unjustified anger in our hearts, we're guilty. It takes it a step further. And he says anyone who says raka, that's an Aramaic word, which means empty head, uh, empty headed fool. Uh, that you'll be subject to the governing authorities of, of, uh, of Judaism, in this case, the Sanhedrin, the religious council, that they would have something to say, you can't do that. Then he goes on further to say, but anyone who says, you fool, and the word there is moros, from where we get our word moron. So if you say to someone, you're a moron, and that even has uh, spiritual connotations, you're making a judgment call about somebody, and saying that you, you, are, you are devoid of any relationship with God, well, you're in danger of the fire of hell. Why does he say that? Because that's what judgmentalism is. When you are supposing to know the intent of another's heart, that's being judgmental. Being judgmental is not uh, standing with God in agreement on what he's already called sin. So many today think that's being judgmental. But being judgmental is calling someone else a moron, someone else a fool, based on what you think is going on in their heart. This is a big deal, so much so that Jesus says, look, if, if you're worshiping at the altar and all of a sudden you realize that you're guilty of some of this, go make it right before you offer your worship to Almighty God. What would happen today is if we, we came into our sanctuaries our places of worship, and we just come before God and saying how much we love him and, and how much we adore him, but yet in our hearts, we're holding anger against someone for no reason. We're being judgmental against someone for no reason. Jesus says you're in danger, and you'd better fix it. I hope that this reaches you today. I hear too many people, too many Christians walking around calling people morons and fools and idiots. And every time I hear it, it just breaks my heart. And it's not a matter of just being nice. I mean, we can be nice to people and not have Jesus, right? It's a matter of representing Jesus. How dare we make judgment calls on people we don't know anything about, especially other believers? Let's pray together. Father, 
I pray that you would examine our hearts and that you would help us, Father, to not let certain things come out of our mouth because out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. We want the abundance in our heart to be Christ-likeness, not that we would be so much like the world that when we're pushed or when we're pressured that we would come out and speak just like the world. We're better than that. You've made us better than that. You've remade us better than that. So, Father, I pray you'll forgive me for the times where I've been quick to judge, where I've been quick to make a, a negative comment about someone, and, and, I, and I didn't even know all the facts. Forgive me, Lord. And I pray that those who are praying with me would search their hearts today as well. Father, I thank you for forgiveness, and I thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all, and have a great day.